All right, I want to give you a rundown of some of the battles that are going to be happening on the eastern part of the European front in World War II. So these are battles between uh, the Nazis and the Soviets uh, that are going to be happening there. Uh, if you were in person, I would be showing you some clips of a really awesome movie called Enemy at the Gates um, that has a little bit to do with this. So uh, if you're not in person, uh, and you'd like to check that out, I'm sure you can find it on a streaming service somewhere, uh, or I've got a copy in the film library, of course, uh, if, uh, if you would be interested. Uh, but want to take you through, just real quickly, uh, some of the battles that are going to happen. Um, this war really starts in 1941 with what's called Operation Barbarossa. If you remember, uh, the Nazis and the Soviets had signed a non-aggression pact uh, where they were going to split up Poland and they weren't going to fight each other for 10 years. Well, once France falls, uh, Hitler looks and says, hey, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got an opportunity here. And he stabs Stalin in the back and invades the Soviet Union. And Operation Barbarossa uh, is the name given for that. Uh, the problem we're going to see is that he starts a little too late uh, in the year. Uh, and by the time he gets to Moscow... Uh, the Soviet winter uh, is going to really affect uh, the success that this is able to have. But to the shock of no one, um, Hitler and Stalin's partnership ends with one of them stabbing the other one uh, in the back. Kind of everybody saw that coming. It was just a matter of when uh, and which one of them uh, it was going to be. Uh, this uh, betrayal is going to kind of force Stalin into the arms of the Allies. Uh, and so Germany is going to end up, especially after D-Day, fighting a war on uh, its east and its west, uh, which it wanted to avoid. That's why it had made that peace with Stalin to begin with. Um, but, like I said, Hitler uh, makes a, a poor decision there. Uh, the Battle of Slominsk uh, is where you start to see uh, Soviet resistance uh, being put up. And it looks really quickly like the Soviets aren't going to have a whole lot for uh, the Nazis. They don't have the equipment. Um, they don't have even guns for all of their own soldiers. Uh, they don't have uh, railway equipment to get stuff from the interior of the country out to uh, the places on the frontier. And so uh, this operation really doesn't start um, the way that uh, the Soviets would have liked. Uh, they're very much caught on their heels. Um, and, and so the Germans are going to get really, really close uh, to, uh, to to taking over the Soviet Union, uh, closer than you know, even people like, uh, uh, like Napoleon did. Uh, now, I, I mention Napoleon because uh, the Germans are not the first people to try and take over the Soviet Union. Uh, usually what people underestimate is the power of the guy on the right, Frosty the Snowman. Uh, the Soviet Union is so big. Uh, that by the time you travel, you've stretched out your supply lines um, across uh, a vast expanse, uh, and then once the snow and the ice hit, you just you can't move supplies the way you need to. So your troops are cold, they're hungry, uh, they don't have the ammunition or the fuel that they need, uh, and usually any kind of action will stall out. Really, the only person who's ever been really successful in the Soviet snow is Rocky Balboa. Uh, in Rocky IV when he gets ready to single-handedly end the Cold War uh, by fighting Ivan Drago. He uses those conditions to get stronger, uh, but basically he's the only one. So, uh, again, why Rocky IV uh, is one of the best movies that's, uh, that's ever made. Uh, the Battle of Moscow uh, between 1941 and 42, uh, Hitler wanted to take over Moscow, thought it would be a huge blow to the Soviet psyche to see their capital city taken over. Uh, Stalin's uh, advisors try to get him to run. When the, the Germans get there, uh, try to get him to leave, and he says, no, we've, we've got to draw a line in the sand somewhere. Uh, and he basically says, I'm staying. And he tells his troops, I'm staying. If you let them take the city, they're taking me. Uh, and the kind of motivational tactic works. Uh, they're going to fight really hard to keep um, the the Nazis out. The Soviet winter is going to hit, and now all of those Nazis are going to wish they had brought their winter coats with them uh, when uh, when they were attacking. Uh, by the end of the winter, the Soviets have managed to regroup, 
and uh, are able to fight back and start to push the Nazis back away. Uh, the most significant battle on the Eastern Front, and you could argue maybe one of the most significant battles in any war in human history, uh, is the Battle of Stalingrad. Uh, Stalingrad is south of Moscow. Uh, it's important because it's on a river called the Volga, that, and it is the guard to the Soviet oil fields. When Hitler figures out he can't take over the Soviet Union, he at least wants that oil to run his war machine. Uh, and so he, he concentrates his troops down there and says, hey, we're going to take this. Uh, so we've got these oil fields. Uh, Stalingrad is urban warfare. This would be like people fighting in uh, in Louisville or New York City. There's these big buildings around. Uh, and so it is, you know, some of you, you folks that, uh, that like uh, Call of Duty and things like that, that's the type of fighting uh, that, uh, that we're talking about. Um, I, again, I mentioned at the, at the top of the video the movie Enemy at the Gates, and that's all about uh, a sniper battle uh, that takes place during uh, the Battle of Stalingrad. Stalingrad is significant because it's the bloodiest battle in human history. Uh, by the time uh, the battle gets over with, more people have been killed uh, in this one battle uh, than at any other time in our history. When you look at the Battle of Stalingrad, uh, this kind of drives a wedge uh, between the Soviets and their American and British allies, too. Uh, the Soviets wanted troops uh, to come and support them at Stalingrad, but neither group on the other side really wanted their troops to go to the Soviet Union because we knew they didn't treat their troops very well. Uh, and so we sent supplies, we sent uh, ammunition and things like that, but we didn't send people. Uh, and there are people that point to this and say this this was the start of the Cold War. This is one of the reasons I said this may be one of the most significant battles in history is that this is going to start to drive a wedge in between the powers of the West uh, and the Soviet Union. And even though they've got this enemy in Hitler uh, that's common, when Hitler goes away, they're going to figure out they don't have a whole lot else uh, in common. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of where this uh, divide is going to start to take place. Um, the Battle of Kursk uh, in 1943 is the largest tank battle in history. Um, and we see an interesting divergence here. Stalin is going to uh, rely on his generals during the Battle of Kursk. Uh, in the beginning... Any general that had too much success, Stalin would basically have him killed because he was, he was worried they were going to be a threat. Uh, the problem is if you kill all the generals that are winning battles, really the only guys you got left around are the guys that couldn't win battles. Uh, and so he, he stops that uh, and basically says, okay, boys, you got this. Hitler, on the other hand, is going to, um, is going to take direct command of troops uh, during the Battle of Kursk. He thinks he's a military genius. Everybody else knows that's not true. Uh, and so we start to see some resentment from his own soldiers uh, and leaders coming towards Hitler at this point. Uh, the Americans are going to extend Lend-Lease like we did to uh, the British to the Soviets at this point. Uh, and so the tanks, uh, an awful lot of the tanks that will be being used in warfare uh, are coming from uh, the Americans. But the Battle of Kursk uh, is kind of the ultimate tank battle uh, of World War II. Uh, it finishes up with the Battle of Berlin. Uh, the Soviets are going to push uh, the Germans all the way back to their capital. Uh, they'll surround the city, uh, and then rather than be captured, uh, Adolf Hitler will commit suicide. We talk more about this uh, when we look uh, at the video of attempts to kill Hitler and then ultimately uh, his death. So I encourage you to well, check that one out. Um, on the uh, Eastern Front, the Soviets will lose by far the most people uh, in World War II. They will lose 23 million uh, of their troops. Uh, like I said, that's really all they had was just a bunch of people. These guys aren't very well supplied. They could just, you know, they had five guys to replace anyone uh, that they lost. That'll account for 65% uh, of all Allied deaths uh, during World War II. So it's a terrible toll that they pay. Uh, with their part uh, in the conflict. Uh, so with those different battles, I'm going to throw some videos up for you on the playlist talking about those different battles uh, if you want to deep dive into some of those uh, and uh, get a little more information.